It's Alice, dear ones. I'm of the stars. And I had to just a few suggestions for you with regard to religious war and how this great hero heroism and courage of, of men of, of, with great religious like convictions all over earth is being exploited by, by the dark side, really, the darkness, to, to create wars which create, um, which are said to be for the sake of religion. And you and I both know that war and religion are really like polar opposites, right? This is duality, this is polarity here, and that is very expectable. People of religion may wish to consider standing for peace and not for war. Okay, not in any circumstances, you know. So, uh, unless their home turf is invaded, you know. But if we all said that, nothing would ever happen in the way of war. <laughs> Part of what happens when people start seeing like the darkness the darkness in in a group or in a, a person is they start because of the way the mind part some part of the mind works they start concentrating on the darkness okay and so when we when we say that because of religious wars religions are not um, are, are bad or evil or, or, or like that I, I think we're going a little too far, you know. I remember the last time I was in Los Angeles, a very big city. Uh, I, I had become more and more sensitive, and Los Angeles was, was releasing all kinds of mental chaos and emotional chaos at the time, the, the last winter when I was there, right? The safest place that I found in my general area was a big church on the edge of the town, a little bit up the hill, so there, it was less populated there. A lot of people went to that church, and it was perfect. It was, even if no one was there, I could find sanctuary there, you know. So, so what I say from that is, there must be something good about churches, you know. And so the other question that comes up is in some Christian churches, uh, there's this symbolic... Um, act, the, the eating of the bread and the wine, which symbolize the body and blood of Christ, okay? And, and it's sure, it is possible to take that in the context of cannibalism, all right? But this is like, this is very similar to when the, um, the, de the demonically oriented people, the, you know, the people that set the uh, black magic people, uh, would t used to take a, a mass and like change the words backwards or whatever they did to make it a black mass. You know, they wanted to court evil rather than rather than Christ consciousness. Okay, so so to say that a sacrament that people take to be uh, a sign that they are they are willing to walk Christ's path and that they are willing to, to rise to Christ's consciousness. To say that that sacrament is cannibalism is sort of like saying the Mass backwards, you know. So these, these darknesses do exist in this duality. Every light has a corresponding dark in the third and fourth dimensions. But, but that's not the same thing as saying that the light is dark, you know. So we have to see the light. We have to see the light here. Okay, not the dark. For instance, there are many good priests who would never think of committing child abuse or like that. But, but a few that have. But why should we concentrate on that? You know? Why not concentrate on the wonderful help that the, that the churches do, the outreach they do to the community, to lift up the poor, to help women, to help to help children, to help the powerless, you know. They, there are many great acts to feed the homeless that, that the churches do and, and to offer comfort to their congregations in time to, of need, to find people jobs, and in my case, to offer a physical sanctuary that is free of the demonic influence in a place that is releasing all kinds of 
mental chaos at this time. So that's just my thought. My thought is we ought to have a temperate approach to everything on Earth because all of these groups are composed of hum human beings, right? Are composed of humanity. And we are all one humankind. We are all ascending together. We can all support each other in this. And so, as to the fate of groups as ascension occurs, the consciousness will come first for all the changes on earth, I feel. The consciousness of, will change. And because the consciousness of, of each human changes, then we will find new ways to express ourselves as a social memory complex. You know, So there's no use, for, for instance, worrying and saying, Oh, oh, I'm not supposed to eat meat anymore, you know, and what will become of my, my cattle ranch, for instance. This is a valid concern. Or, oh my gosh, it would be better to be outdoors than, than working in an office, and here I am, stuck in an office, and all these concerns we have about how things are changing. Because as our consciousness changes, it will become clear to us what the next step is. You know, and and we as 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 a, as humankind don't know yet what the what the change will what the changes will be because our consciousness is not there yet. So it will all be clear, little by little. It strikes me as like a great symphony is taking place. I can hear it. A great symphony of the universe is taking place. And our piccolo <laughs> blends with the cosmic sound so beautifully, you know. If only we knew how beautiful we are, how har harmonic with all that is. If only we knew how, how easy it is to rise to that understanding, we would have no concerns at all. There would be no there would be no discomfort in this process. I, I know this to be true with my heart. and Sometimes I falter. I understand. Sometimes I do falter. <laughs> so, I wish you sureness in your steps and a sure path forward. God bless you all. Bye-bye.